Hey everybody, Akamatsu here, back with a thoughts video. This time on Final Fantasy V, the sixth game in our Final Fantasy Marathon. Final Fantasy V joins Final Fantasy III and IV for barely hearing anything about the game before playing it. There were two things that I knew about before going in, and one of them was wrong. I knew Bart's, Boko, Ferris, and Gigglemish. It's hard not to hear about Bart's and Boko, especially Boko since it's the most popular chocobo in the entire Final Fantasy series that I've played so far. I learned about all of them in World of Final Fantasy when I played that back in 2018. At the same time, Gigglemish was also in World of Final Fantasy, but I first experienced him in Final Fantasy VIII. Now that I say that out loud, it sounds like I actually know a lot about the game, but not actually. I just knew their names. I didn't really know who they were. Like World of Final Fantasy doesn't dive too deep into who they are, but I knew their names, just not their backstories. I almost forgot about the thing that I got wrong, which is related to the main villain, X Death. For some reason, I thought X Death was in Final Fantasy 2. I don't know why. I think it's because I've heard people complain about him, and I've heard people complain about Final Fantasy 2 a lot. So I guess I associated X Death was in Final Fantasy 2, but I didn't even think about that as I was playing the game. I don't know why. So when we played 5 and we got the X Death, I was like, oh, oh, okay, he's in this one. Again, he's a character that I knew by name, but I didn't really know too much about him outside of people complaining about him, but they never really specified why. And that's pretty much all I knew about going into Final Fantasy V. Now, with all that said and done, let us jump into my thoughts. So we're going to start off with the good. First thing up on the list is the job system. So Final Fantasy V takes the job system that we get to barely experience in one, right? You pick your job and you pick it throughout the entire game. And then the job system really gets implemented in Final Fantasy III. And then Final Fantasy V improves upon it even more. It's great. The only thing they chopped was the, how do you phrase it? They went to the MP system that got started in Final Fantasy 2. I don't know what you would call the system in Final Fantasy 1 and 3, but the job system improvements are nice. Now around, every job has a job command, which is an ability that they most likely had before. Like for example, ninjas have throw as the job command and the job command cannot be changed. So it's an ability that the job will always have on. But you also get something called abilities. Now, jobs earn abilities as you rank them up. And these abilities can be interchangeable between different jobs. Another job can wear a job ability from another job. Knight learns sword, and then you can pass it along to another job that cannot equip swords. So for, let's say, ninja, you can give ninja heavy swords. And then it just makes Ninja even more powerful. <laughs> it was cool because as a big Final Fantasy XI player, I've played the game for 10 plus years. This is really where the implementations of what's in Final Fantasy XI get started. Now you're restricted to only being able to do this with one ability and jobs learn multitude of abilities. It depends on the job. Some of them learn more than others. But you could give a black mage, white mage abilities. You can give a white mage abilities to a ninja if you level up white mage on that character. You can give any ability from any other job that you earned on another job. And it opens up the possibilities of uniqueness even higher. Now, I thought the job system in 3 was great. I thought it was fantastic. And I honestly didn't really see it getting any better in the early Final Fantasy games. And it does. Final Fantasy V finds a way to improve on it and make it even better. There's a ton of jobs for you to use in this game. They are almost all viable, too. There's some clear ones that are better than others. But for the most part, every job is useful. And that's great. Nothing really gets steamrolled, you could say. It's really neat the amount of jobs they have and the improvements that they made on the job system. The second thing I enjoyed 
was that Final Fantasy V is basically Final Fantasy III and Final Fantasy I story, but now with personalized characters. Final Fantasy II really starts to try the trend of personalized characters, where in one and three, you are warriors of light without names. You can give your characters names, and they don't really get their own identities in three until the game is remade. So five starts it where now the characters have names, but they're also still warriors of light. So it's taking the ideas from one and three, but now adding a little bit of two and four four in it and making the characters more personal and not just avatars to push the story along but actual people with turmoil goals aspirations and stuff like that it was great to see the evolution of this from three to five or one three to five you could say the story itself was very enjoyable i found myself enjoying it it's a different change of pace from four Four would say it's more akin to two in terms of tone and darkness. Now, there's some dark moments in five as well. But overall, it's a little bit more lighthearted and it has more goofy moments to it. But it was a very enjoyable story. The next thing that I enjoyed about the game was the main villain, X-Def. Now, X-Def, when compared to the previous villain in four, Golbez, he's campy as hell. <laughs> One-dimensional. He's just ridiculous. Golbez, you know, very serious guy, even though he has his ridiculous moments. You can kind of take Golbez a little bit more serious than x -Def. Even x -Def's backstory is just like, what? But I have to say, as corny as he is, he's enjoyable. He's just ridiculous, over the top. And once you realize that he's just one-dimensional, you're just on a ride with him and how just ridiculous he becomes. His music, his theme song is great every time he's on the screen. 120% into his character, and it just goes there. He's like screaming into the void and stuff like that. And it's just so stupid that I find it funny and it's amusing. And it kind of goes with the whole tone of five being a little bit more lighthearted. I found X Def to be just funny. And that's also backed up by the next character I'm going to talk about. Five introduces the character Gigglemish. And like I said in the intro, I learned about Gigglemish from Final Fantasy VIII, but he doesn't really have much personality in Final Fantasy VIII. He's kind of just there. Gigglemish in Five, first thing, his theme song is sick. It has no business being that good. It's so good. But two, he is such a wacky <laughs> idiot character. <laughs> and it's just funny. The encounters you have with him are just entertaining he himself is entertaining when he's on the screen it's always a great time you pair him with x def you just got a recipe for two idiots it's just enjoyable like i said it's a the game itself is a bit more campy x def's a bit more campy and giggle mish tied right with them it's just great it was just a, a nice recipe for this game to be a little bit more lighthearted. really enjoyed his portrayal and i always enjoyed when he was on screen that's pretty much going to do it for everything that I thought was good in the game. Now, with that said, let's jump into the neutral. And that has to do with Boko. And I find Boko in this game to be weird. Whenever you see Bart's in promos for Final Fantasy V, he's always with Boko. When I played World of Final Fantasy, he was paired with Boko. So it came to great shock to me of how little Boko is actually in the game. Now, game length wise, Final Fantasy V is about twice as long as Final Fantasy IV, at least for me it was. And so it became even more apparent when Boko wasn't in it when the game's even longer. Everywhere you see Bart's, you see Boko like they're inseparable. I think you see Boko maybe like four or five times, maybe. I would have thought he would have been in the game so much more. They seem like they were always together, but it's not the case. Not really anything serious. It's not a bad thing. It's just like, hmm, wow, okay, interesting. And that's pretty much all I had in the neutral part. And believe it or not, that's pretty much all I have to say about Final Fantasy V in a nutshell. I have absolutely no bad things to say about this game. I enjoyed it from start 
to finish. If I had to maybe come up with a bad on the fly, I and I'm just throwing a bone out there, maybe the characters you could say are not as interesting as the characters in 4 because of the way the story is structured and stuff like that with 4. I could see people not enjoying the characters in 5 as much. I had a fantastic time with Final Fantasy V. I loved Final Fantasy III, and Final Fantasy V is just a natural improvement of that. And I think that's great. <laughs> just more Final Fantasy III, but better. So Final Fantasy V for me was a fantastic time. I can't recommend it enough. I thought it was really great. That's going to conclude my thoughts video on Final Fantasy V. What do you think about Final Fantasy V? Let me know down in the comments below. Did you enjoy it as much as I did? While you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to let me know. Maybe possibly give the video a like and share it with your friends. Also, if you would like to join us on our Final Fantasy Marathon, I've been playing through the entire series. We're going all the way to Final Fantasy 15, including the MMOs. We'll be playing Final Fantasy 11 and 14. 16 is most likely going to be out by the time like long before I even finish. But you can join me over on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv forward slash Akamatsu. I stream every day at 2 a.m. Eastern time. We'd love to have you. I would like to thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I will see you all in the next one. Stay crunchy, amigos.